Do you have Hashimoto's? And are you wondering what new information or research can help you in your quest to stay healthy this coming fall during what might be a more challenging cold, flu, and coronavirus season? Thanks for tuning in. My name is Sarah Peternell. I'm the owner of Family Nutrition Services in Denver, Colorado, and I'm also the creator of the 30-day online program called Nourished and Renewed. Today, I'm checking back uh, with all of you who maybe have seen my other videos about what you need to know if you have Hashimoto's and you're concerned about maybe the likelihood or the risk factors and especially the prevention that you can take into your own hands as we face this world pandemic virus. There's a lot of good news and it pertains really to one of the biggest and single most important nutrients that we need if we have Hashimoto's. So today I'm gonna to be talking about zinc. This is my update for today on COVID-19, the role that zinc plays in the body. <clears throat> I'm actually gonna be posting a blog post uh, in, a f in a couple of weeks with all of the details and links to research. So if you're also following me on my website and reading my articles, check it out over there, sarahpeternell.com. Today, I'm just gonna kinda of give you a sneak preview for what you need to know. So the first thing is that you've probably heard about zinc. You definitely have probably heard about zinc lately as it's actually been kind of one of those controversial but important subjects in the news as we talk about boosting immunity. It's no surprise, like if you're coming down with a cold, that you might even think to pop like a zinc lozenge or increase your intake of zinc-rich foods. We've long known that zinc helps to support a healthy immune system. <clears throat> Excuse me. Zinc and the immune system are intricately connected, and so if you think about Hashimoto's and the fact that this is an autoimmune condition that unnecessarily targets the tissue of the thyroid and if we can get the immune system to behave properly well then we don't have too many concerns right with maybe the direction that our health is going. I'm going to give you some statistics about zinc. It's actually really common for Americans to be deficient but this type of deficiency isn't very often thought of at, say, like a primary care checkup, it can often go undiagnosed. And if you have hypothyroidism, again, caused by Hashimoto's, well, there is a greater likelihood that you also have a deficiency in zinc. So zinc is a mineral, and it's considered an essential trace mineral. It means that our bodies cannot make zinc. So when it's essential, it means we must get it from outside sources like from food or from supplements and I'll be talking more about the food uh, aspects um, in a little bit but the most important thing that we know about zinc is that it plays a really critical role in the immune system you just heard me talk about that a moment ago zinc supports our T cells of our immune system and T cells are white blood cells they're also known as lymphocytes and they are the cells that attack virus infected cells including even cancer cells. So that's a whole other conversation. But T cells are really important. The T cells can trigger, trigger an immune response in other cells as well. So they're kind of like the catalyst that gets the immune system up and running to combat against an infection. Maybe you've heard of T cells and you're not quite sure about what they do? Well, you don't really need to know all the science behind it, but what we do need to know is that the role of T cells is being studied right now widely in its role for how we combat something like the coronavirus. So T cells have a memory of the types of viral antigens or other types of infectious antigens that they've protected against in the body. Have you heard about antibodies as well? You know, we've been talking about some of the testing and types of things to indicate whether or not you have an active or a past infection of coronavirus. It's been all over the news that a lot of these tests have been kind of inconclusive. And I myself can vouch for that with my own testing results. Looking for antibodies is one way to see if your body has actually launched an attack against the coronavirus. But another thing that's being studied by researchers are whether or not T 
cells in the body, these same ones that I was just talking about that are supported by the healthful levels of zinc in our body, if these T cells actually have a longer term and better memory against COVID-19. So if you have Hashimoto's, well, there's a chance you may be deficient in zinc. And if you're deficient in zinc, your immune system may not work very well, of course, on this level of autoimmunity, but also your T cells may not be strong enough to support you in your desire to prevent getting infected with the coronavirus. Or if you should become infected, if the T cells are not supported by zinc, then your body may not be able to combat it as effectively. So the role of zinc kind of comes full circle, even again, thinking about maybe, you know, the deficiencies that are associated with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's, but it's all kind of part of the same picture when it comes to our immune system. Let's talk a little bit more. So similar to magnesium, and I have a video about magnesium and its role with Hashimoto's, but zinc and magnesium, these are cofactors. It means that they are minerals or they're nutrients in the body that are necessary for a number of different enzymatic functions to take place. Without these important minerals, certain processes that we need to be healthy just don't happen. In fact, hundreds of these processes are dependent alone on zinc, hundreds, hundreds of these applications within the body. The main uh, role that we know uh, zinc has in sort of acute cases are, is the ability of zinc to help with anti-inflammatory conditions, and especially when it comes to skin conditions like acne, eczema, rosacea. These are some of the inflammatory properties that zinc can help with, even just kind of your common rash, even things like foot fungus, and also internal skin issues like mouth sores that we can experience, canker sores as well. These are all related to a deficiency in zinc. Both men and women rely heavily on zinc for reproductive health. I'm not gonna go into that today, but men with a deficiency of zinc, they are more prone to sperm motility issues and a low sperm count. And women, their reproductive function and hormonal health and balance is also dependent on a healthy level of zinc in the body. Okay. Why in the world do we have so many people in this country who are zinc deficient? And is this one of the reasons why people with underlying conditions are becoming sick with coronavirus and potentially having these long-lasting implications um, post-viral uh, with, with other kind of lingering issues? Well, I think that zinc does have something to do with it. So as I said, many Americans are deficient in zinc, and it's estimated that about 25% of the world's population that's a huge part of the world, is deficient in zinc. A quarter of the world. Um, really, this is primarily and, uh, you know, not surprisingly so in the impoverished areas where there is a lack of nutritious food. This is, you know, one of the reasons why not just paying attention to nutrition at the micro level, but on a global level is very important. Even in the United States, about 12% of people have a pretty serious deficiency of zinc. So it is lacking in the diet. And basically, you know, it seems like it would be easy to find these types of foods that contain zinc. And it's estimated that really the body only needs about 10 milligrams of zinc per day for maintenance of zinc levels in the body. A four to five ounce serving of grass fed beef contains about four to five grams of zinc. And that may not be enough, obviously. So people who don't have access to high quality beef may not be getting the zinc that they need. But it's also found in plant-based foods as well. It's found in legumes and vegetables and mushrooms. And it's also found in a wide variety of seafood. I love to think about zinc with oysters. So if you're a fan of oysters like I am, having those occasionally, especially taking your partner, on a date maybe, and the two of you going out for some oysters is a great way to boost fertility and reproductive hormone health. So just keep that in your back pocket for later. All right, so our country is basically facing some challenges in the landscaping of our farming and food agriculture. And our plant-based foods now have less zinc than they used to due to soil depletion. Have you heard of this? 
Well, we've used our farming lands in such a way that zinc levels and other mineral levels have decreased over the decades. Also, the use of pesticides and herbicides have contributed to this. In the United States, we don't do as much crop rotating as we should, okay? And even in organic farming, this can still be an issue. So there are soil issues that affect the quality of the nutrients that our foods are grown in, and that can be one of the reasons why our foods, our plant-based foods, are deficient in zinc. Well, there's also issues with our own human body in the way that we would use zinc and be able to, you know, get this into our cells and into our lymphocytes and into our T cells so that they can work properly. Well, how is your digestion? You can check out one of my other videos that I have about leaky gut, food intolerances, etc. But basically, if you have any digestive complications or any digestive illnesses like I do, I have celiac disease, well, you may also have some difficulty utilizing zinc properly. So if you start to think about all the reasons why we have zinc deficiencies and the ways in which this may affect our bodies, it's no surprise to me that in addition to the number of underlying conditions Americans face in this country, the zinc deficiency is widespread enough that it may be one of those underlying issues that's contributing to uh, worse outcomes in the coronavirus here in the United States. So there are some signs of zinc deficiency, and I would say that one of them would be knowing that you have an autoimmune disease. That would be probably one of the very first things to think about in your quest for individualized nutrient support with Hashimoto's disease in particular would be, okay, I have an autoimmune illness. That means my immune system doesn't function as, as well as it should probably need some extra zinc. That's actually a sign of deficiency. But also other things, again, as I said, can go undiagnosed or missed would be weight loss, um, like especially sudden rapid weight loss, poor wound healing, hair and skin issues. If your hair is falling out, you can check out my other video about hair and Hashimoto's, but hair loss is definitely associated with low zinc. Skin issues, as I mentioned, eczema, ash, uh, rashes, and acne. Also allergies, frequent colds. So as I said at the very beginning of this video, if you know you're getting sick, you pop a zinc lozenge. What if you're always popping zinc lozenges? And you're like, God, every winter's the same. I'm always catching every little bug. What is wrong with me? Well, maybe it's that your zinc is very low on sort of your um, status quo level and those little zinc, zinc lozenges are not doing enough to bring it up. So if you tend to be prone to colds and flus, especially during the winter months. This may be something that you want to consider that it's a sign of zinc deficiency. Other signs might also be things like depression or anxiety and also um, strange things like an impaired sense of taste or an impaired sense of smell. Does this sound like anything else that we've been hearing about in the news with coronavirus? That one of the signs uh, and symptoms of coronavirus is that we notice uh, some individuals have a change in their sense of taste and sense of smell. My interpretation of this is that the body is rapidly using so much zinc to combat the coronavirus by stimulating and supporting those T cells that it creates an even more widespread deficiency of zinc leading to this bizarre symptom that's actually just a symptom of broad scale zinc deficiency in the body. That's just my take from what I've read in the research but I do think it's quite interesting. Okay, so kind of to know if you have, you know, if these symptoms are really related to a zinc deficiency, you need to do a zinc test and your doctor can order one for you. But really there's a couple of ways you can do this on your own at home. There's a liquid form of zinc um, and it's something that you could maybe pick up at the health food store, but I do it here in my office. It's called the zinc tally test and it's a liquid zinc that I have my clients hold in their mouth and swish it around a little bit before swallowing it and then I ask the question what do you taste after they swallow it in about maybe 20 seconds and their answer to that question gives me some very good insight as to whether or not they have a zinc deficiency. Well why is that? So if you swish liquid zinc around in your mouth and if you experience a lack of taste it could indicate a possible deficiency. So if you do the zinc tally test, and you're like, it just kind of tastes like weird water to me. To me, 
that says if you can't taste the zinc, that you have the deficiency. All right. If, on the other hand, you immediately notice a very pungent, bitter taste, well, that probably tells me that you don't have a zinc deficiency if you can actually taste the zinc in the zinc. So that's kind of the poor man's zinc test. And so you may have a practitioner in your local area who can help administer this for you. Um, or you can pick up a zinc tally at like your drugstore or your health food store, and you can swish it around in your mouth to see what your result comes back with. Um, also, if you're working with a board certified uh, nutrition practitioner like me, you can also get access to the spectrocell micronutrient test, which will tell you definitively if your white blood cells have a deficiency in zinc. And I've been using the spectrocell for more than a decade in my practice, and I've also been using the spectrocell test for my own health, and it's been one of the key things that's really been helping me to maintain wellness is knowing what specific vitamins and minerals I need. And I can tell you that time and time again in working with my clients, I see zinc deficiencies across the board. And I especially see these zinc deficiencies on the spectra cell test come back when an individual has compromised immunity, like from an autoimmune condition like Hashimoto's. So it's not hard for me to put these pieces of the puzzle together when I'm giving you this Hashimoto's COVID update, that a lot of the same underlying deficiencies um, that may contribute to autoimmunity like Hashimoto's might be some of those same underlying issues that would affect you in the way that your body responds to coronavirus. So in addition to watching my other video about the things that you can do to really help protect and keep your health during this crazy time that we're living in, paying attention specifically to the types of foods that you eat and making sure that they contain zinc and also that you might want to consider taking a zinc supplement would be very important. So, um, okay. Oh, wait, one more thing I do want to mention too, just about people who have the underlying risk factors and that we've seen have been the greatest demographic impacted by coronavirus in the United States has been the older population, the elderly. Well, elderly people are, are at a greater risk for zinc deficiency. This is because as we age, our body has poorer absorption and lower stomach acid, and these decrease as we get older so that our ability to utilize zinc can be impaired, even if we're eating zinc-rich foods. Also, individuals who have alcoholism or consume more than a moderate amount of alcohol may also be at risk for zinc deficiency. So, Think about maybe some of the different types of lifestyle factors that affect older Americans, whether it's digestive complications, alcohol consumption for a long time, or any of the other, any of the other underlying issues that may be present. So again, the zinc deficiency uh, is very important to consider. How much zinc do you need? Well, I'm not going to talk about kids. I'm going to talk about adults because, again, we're talking about how, what is the update, at least for preventing coronavirus if you have Hashimoto's. So for adults, we'll say, you know, adolescents um, through old age, the, the recommended daily allowance, which is kind of the low end of the scale, is that for females, you should have 8 milligrams per day, and males, you should have 11 milligrams per day. Well, that might not be enough. A lot of the supplements that I recommend in my practice start at 15 milligrams and up. I personally take 20 milligrams of zinc per day, and I have done this for many, many, many years. So when people talk to me about like, why well, aren't you worried you have Hashimoto's? Could you possibly be at risk for getting the coronavirus? I just have to think about some of the supplements and nutrients in my home arsenal and know, well, no, I'm not deficient in zinc. And I know that because of the spectra cell test, and I know it because I take zinc every single day, um, and I have done that for a long time. So I feel like my T-cells are pretty well armed should they need that to combat an infection. There are food sources of zinc. As I mentioned, beef is, being, is one of them. Also, spinach is a great source of um, plant-based. Asparagus, too, and mushrooms, even pumpkin, a great one that most people don't know about, um, pumpkin seeds and sesame seeds. So you can have pumpkin butter or sesame butter, which is called tahini, and you can use that in a variety of recipes to give you a great boost of zinc. Even garbanzo beans and lentils, quinoa, shrimp, cashews, these foods all contain zinc. And the best um, amount of zinc, as I said, is from oysters. Just one oyster contains up to about eight 
milligrams of zinc. So there's your daily dose um, for females if you're following the RDA. So, okay, so I have a lot of research here in front of me. A lot of this is going into the creation of the blog post, which will be available um, in September. And I'm uh, not going to go into all this, but you can read it later. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, one more thing that I want to mention is that there are a lot of individuals in our country who are taking medications that may also compromise their ability to absorb zinc properly. So again, let's recap. We've got coronavirus affecting the elderly. We've got coronavirus affecting individuals who are zinc deficient, the elderly. We've got coronavirus affecting people who may have pre-existing conditions like autoimmune conditions, which is a sign and symptom of zinc deficiency. And we also have coronavirus affecting people who maybe are taking medications to control a certain uh, illness or disease that they have. And those, in, in, those medications may in turn uh, might also be affecting their ability to utilize zinc properly. Wow. So the zinc piece of the puzzle in terms of coronavirus and our health, especially for those of us those of us with Hashimoto's, I feel like we know one of the answers. Um, we've talked about vitamin C, we've talked about vitamin D, we've talked about a lot of the herbs and other things that you can use to help support a healthy immune system, but I'm starting to feel like the number one thing, the number one most important thing is zinc. So stay tuned, check out my blog post in September and you can get more information about this very important nutrient for your thyroid and Hashimoto's. But I hope this has been beneficial and brought you up to speed on some of the latest and greatest research about how with Hashimoto's we can protect our health even better with zinc, especially as we go into cold and flu season and as we're still combating coronavirus uh, as a country and as a world. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing my videos. I'll be back with more. See you later. Hi, thank you so much for being a subscriber to my YouTube channel. Right now, I'm offering a very special discount on the Nourished and Renewed with Hashimoto's 30-day online self-paced program. This is a very special opportunity, and just for you, my YouTube subscribers. You guys have been with me since the beginning of my channel, and you've been watching all of my videos about Hashimoto's, health, detox, kids, family nutrition, and more but maybe you've been thinking about going a little bit deeper, really getting to the root cause of some of your issues, why you maybe need some additional support and guidance. Well, Nourished and Renewed is loaded with videos, handouts, recipes. In fact, the content alone is like coming to my office for nine nutrition sessions. I'm in the process of moving my office right now to a new location in the Denver metro area. I actually love changes, I love the change in seasons, and I love supporting this community. Thank you all for being here. This discount is for you guys while well, I'm in the midst of a big move in my life as well, but it won't last forever. So check it out, and I'll see you on the other side of Nourished and Renewed. Take care.